We're good. Okay. Yeah. Welcome, guys. Welcome to Daily Refinement. This is our Monday Q&A. Sorry the last couple of weeks was on Tuesday, but moving forward, Monday, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, open Q&A, so ask as many questions as you want, um, and I'll stay here about an hour. So I appreciate you guys. Um, today I want to talk about the fastest way to grow eBay sales, and it's going to be something a lot of resellers don't want to hear, but it's, you know, it is something that it, is, it definitely works. Uh, wait, what's our topic for Wednesday again? <laughs> um, how would you invest $1,000 into, e into your and eBay? And then what about podcast? Um, exposing the number one way to get more eBay sales. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a little different. Okay. So today we're going to talk about the fastest way to grow an eBay sale. And then on the podcast this week, we're going to talk about the number way number one way to increase your sales. Those are different. Increasing your sales is about what you can change in your store to make sales go faster. And today we're talking about how to build an overall eBay business the fastest. You guys ready? So please smash the like button. Consider subscribing. Do we, how many, do we have people in here now? We have 78 people. All right. Hello, let's get everyone. into it. Let's get into it. <laughs> Good okay, morning. guys. You ready? Um, so I don't know if this is an age thing, um, but I'm just going to throw it out there. Myself, as I'm getting older, I'm almost 40, right? I actually don't necessarily want to start over in anything. I feel like I have a decent amount of life experience. I don't want to start over again, learn something all the way from scratch. But I will tell you, that is the fastest way to learn eBay and the fastest way to make the most money as possible is to go all the way back to the beginning and figure out how to make profit on one item. So you gotta get down and dirty and figure out exactly what all the different fees mean on a single item. And so many people are above doing that. And they just say, I don't care. I'm just gonna go out and buy things and they're less than what I'm gonna sell them for, I'm good. And that mentality will not get you very far. So if we talk about the, the mountain of resellers, right? If you skip the step of learning what to do, you'll be stuck here on the level one of the mountain and never get above that because you don't have the foundations to build upon. You're just buying things at a lower price, selling them at a higher price, don't really know beyond that, and you're, you're gonna ca artificially cap yourself. You'll never make it higher onto the mountain. All the people on the top of the mountain know exactly what happens at the bottom. Right? It doesn't work the other way. You have to know all the different steps. And somebody put in the comment section last week, I don't know if this is true or not, but you guys let me know in the comment section if you agree with that or not. Average sale price and volume is earned okay meaning like you don't just get a high average sell price which is asp and you don't just get a lot of sales those are not can't be given that you have to earn that it takes time to build up to where you sell a lot of items i think a lot of people will come out the gate hot firing listing hundreds of items and they'll sell a few here and there and they, they move up on the reseller mountain the level one and they just stay there their entire ebay career they never get beyond 10 sales a day. So for those of you on level two and level three, let's say you're selling 30 a day and can't get to the next level, you might have to drop down all the way back to zero and start over to really understand how to grow because at this stage in my reselling career, I know what it takes to do any size eBay business. I know exactly what it takes. It takes growing one level at a time and making sure all the steps are taken care of. Before you move to the next level, you have to know all the pieces that need to be in place, all the resources you need, you need to know how long it's gonna take and that you can't artificially know that. You have to slowly start at the bottom. So the fastest way is to start over. And to tell people, especially people in their 50s, 60s, 70s, you have to start over, that's a painful pill to swallow. And so somebody in the chat said that they were 59 years old earlier in the morning call and said that they're not afraid of starting over. That's I feel like that's an outlier. Most people do not want to start over. But for me, starting over with no money, in fact, I'm about to launch a new challenge for you guys where I'm going to start in debt. Okay, because people, some people have less than zero. Okay, so we're going to start in debt. And I think I'm going to do this. I'm pretty sure. Start in debt. I don't know what's a reasonable amount of debt. You guys tell me in the chat. And go all the way to a million dollars um, from negative, right? Because... That will take a little bit longer since the zero to one thousand dollars a week only took two and a half months. Hopefully, the zero to negative to a million will take several years, so I don't have to think about content. 
that would be fantastic. I could just talk about how to do that, <laughs> um, which is great because most people don't do that. They have like little things, but this is perfect. It's like my little hobby. I want to turn negative into a million dollars. So pretty excited mm -hmm. about that. And most people in here listening, hopefully you want that. Uh, throw me some questions, comments. Um, what's up, guys? Mm -hmm. <laughs> hello, everyone. Shells World says hello from England. Ooh. Hello, hello. I, I want to visit the UK again because I want to visit Z. And I love the UK so much. I just think that the, um, yeah. I just love it. I, I want to go to London. London again. Hopefully, mm -hmm. um, we can come out to London, film a few videos out there. That would be amazing. Oh, that'd be awesome. Awesome. Um, let's see. Mike says, what is your opinion on people having garage sales asking for eBay prices? Now more than ever, I'm running into families wanting full retail prices without doing the work on eBay. It makes sense. Times are tough. So, I mean, you can tell. I went to a community elementary school flea market. So everyone's selling. You had to be in elementary school. Okay. So we're talking about the oldest people there were 10, 12, really young. So it was cool because when you went around, there's 10, 12-year-olds who are even more savvy than the <laughs> garage sale people, I think, that have eBay prices. And they were saying, okay, mm -hmm. I got my 10 video games for sale. We got comps for you guys on eBay. They're selling for $30 each. Here, I'm going to offer you guys a discount of $25, right? A little bit less than the eBay price. So if you want the game, right, you can just pay me the appropriate local price for the item because 30 on eBay, $25 here saves you money on the shipping. But guess what? I'm open for offers. That is a very advanced eight-year-old trying to get as much money as possible for their merchandise. You got to respect that. I do, mm -hmm. right? Times are tough. Maybe his budget for buying video games is really small. So he's trying to maximize what he's got. I don't knock the hustle and this kid knows how to do business at age eight. Okay, because he's got the best offer going. He's got the combined discount order. He had to take it all. I'll make you the. I'll make you a deal you can't refuse. Okay, <laughs> this is a young kid figuring out how to cater to the customer. Of course, right? If you have no skills, then you only have one choice. Everything is ten cents. Right? If you have to sell your items and you have zero skills and you're too lazy to look at what every single item is, ten cents for it all. Guess what? some of the items still won't sell. So it's, a, it's appropriate. I went to a garage sale recently in the last six months where the lady, everything was still in pennies and cents and I don't know if she like, hasn't been outside in several decades. Because <laughs> I was like, this stuff was 10 cents, this stuff was a quarter, this stuff was a dollar. And I was thinking, does this lady not know that five six dollars for gas now? Like, I. You know, people were buying like wheelbarrows full of stuff for like $22. So I don't know what, what that was. Or, or is that just a, a way to move inventory? Yeah. Right? Or should she have just put free, everything free? Uh, I don't know. You guys tell me how to organize that. But I literally went to a garage sale where things were in increments of coins. And the most expensive thing was like $2. I was like CD player, $2. Um, jacket. 50 cents. It was like really, really <laughs> low. But on the alternative, you do see people, there's a guy in San Francisco that charges over eBay prices because you don't have to wait. You could buy it on eBay for 30, but you'd have to wait for six days for the person to ship it to you. You might not even get it. That person might be lying. Here, you can see in person, they want 30. All I'm asking, 50. Right? So that's a thing. What's up, Victor? Mm -hmm. you good? No, you're good. Um, Ryan says, what measurements do you include on men's pants, and is it the same for women's? Boom. That's great. I love that question because I just, every Monday, we're going to update uh, my store inventory at dailyrefinement.com, and I just added bottoms. So normally, I only sell jeans and clothing, but I have 20, around 20 boxes of bottoms, which include pants, jeans, um, slacks, right? And I price them at 150 for 45 so like 3 bucks a piece, including shipping. So really, really cheap. Hopefully, they'll sell out this week because I'm clearing out space. Um, so, okay, how do I do it? So I recommend, at the minimum, waist and inseam, right? Those are going to be from the crotch seam to the bottom hem, waist uh, laying flat. Um, make sure that you post the size on the tag in the title. That's how I do it. Some people put tag 28 actual 23 or whatever they do in the title because most of the time on pre-owned clothing it's going to be different the waist measurement is going to be different than what's actually printed on the tag so 
minimum waste, minimum uh, inseam. But if you want to really reduce questions, I would do uh, rise and also leg cuff. Those two are pretty easy to take. It only takes a few more seconds and then you'll have four measurements. I don't recommend thigh measurement or ankle measurement because that takes up too much time. And there's not enough questions to justify that extra time in my opinion. And if you offer free returns, you can just answer. Um, I, I apologize, I only have time to um, take the measurements for the waist and the inseam, but I do have free returns. So if the, the calf or the thigh doesn't fit properly, just return it. Uh, doesn't fit is, an, is a, 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 um, a valid return reason for me personally. Juan says, what should be a shipping price for clothing? I would recommend if you're gonna ship first class, charging the customer between free and $5.99, depending on your business model. Uh, if you're gonna go priority, I would recommend charging between free and $9.99. I feel like above $9.99 seems very, very expensive for clothing. And again, remember, um, total price is the main thing that makes things sell, not pricing. So like if you sell a Gucci shirt for $1 plus $29.99 shipping, it'll still sell. Because that's $31 total, that's still reasonable for a Gucci shirt, it's gonna sell. But if you do something at um, $100, if you're trying to sell um, a Morona sweater for $100, but you have free shipping, that doesn't work because the customer's like, but you're asking $100 for the item, I don't care about the free shipping. I'd rather you charge me $1 and charge me $2 for shipping. So it's important to understand because if your item doesn't sell at $1 free shipping, you've got some major problems with your listing. So I always recommend that. When people, things, people say, my things aren't selling, 99.9% .9 of the time it's price. Uh, because if you were to price it, if eBay is really broken, try it. Try $1 free shipping. And if you don't sell the item, please email me your listing. And I'll most likely buy it from you. So, well, actually, my wife will buy it from you since she has an eBay account and I don't anymore. So, <laughs> right. uh, email me the listing if you can't sell for one dollar free shipping, and I'll take a look. Um, answering your question about debt, Mary says seven hundred dollars in debt starting starting over here at fifty nine. Okay, seven hundred dollars in debt starting over at age fifty nine. That's maybe one k in debt would be a solid place to start. What do you guys think? Is that a reasonable amount of debt to start with? Because okay, here's the thing with debt you're forced to sell things you own. Mm -hmm. You literally have no money and you have a credit card payment coming, right? Uh, assuming you didn't get your loan from Jimmy down the street who's gonna break your legs. If you got it from a credit card then you can make monthly payments to, get to, to, to pay it down. So that, that, is, that is something that we can talk about because I wanna go over the what happens when you resell when you have debt. And this will encourage you guys not to take out a loan because like, it's working against you. You don't need to take out a loan, but you do anyway, and then that loan starts accruing interest as soon as you take it. So it'll encourage you guys not to do that. Ben says, what do you do with clothing items that fail an authentication check? I'm back and forth on the ethics of trash versus redonate. Um, I would send it into the real real. Um, if, because sometimes authentication services are wrong. So I would send it into a company like the real real who's really, really, um, experience in that type of thing and that's perfect because they can go through it double check it legit check it and if it doesn't pass they'll just confiscate it so that's how i approach it because it's not really worth it getting a ding for one counterfeit item because you can sell items for forever on ebay if you don't do that so my policy is uh, send it into the real real or throw it away not redonate mm. let us know if the sound is okay sounds like seems like some people it's okay and some people it's not but let us know. Mm -hmm. um, AA or AA says, question, any advice on hitting 200K pounds profit within a year? Oh, everyone's within a year. <laughs> within a year, ASAP, bro. Um, trying to get to the, the 200,000 200, pounds in, within one year. Um, okay, this is gonna, depending on what you sell, but essentially the way to do it would be you would have to find fast selling items and sell out. That would be the only way to get 200,000 pounds in one year. You could not buy inventory that sits. So you'd have to focus on iPhones. You have to focus on high risk items, items that have a high frequency of being returned. So that would be the only way to do that amount of profit in one year starting at zero. So I don't know where you are at, 
But to make 200,000 pounds in one year starting at zero, you have to sell out of your products completely because you don't have enough time to wait for items to sell. It'd be too slow. You have to take $10 today. By the end of the week, it's 50 already. By the end of the next week, it's 100 already. By the next end of the next week, it's 400 already. You have to, you have to turn it over quickly um, in order to get enough repetitions to do 200,000. Because let's just say you make 10 pounds per item. That's 100, uh, that's 100, or I'm sorry, 20,000 items. That's around 50 a day, roughly. And that's like, is that right? That's um, 200,000 pounds is... 20,000 items that's like 70 a day 70 a day yeah that's right 70 a day um so the only way to do that would be to sell out you have to sell very 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 fast selling items to do that hmm. i'm getting a lot of um some people can't hear me some people can hear me really well <laughs> really let's um change to where we take out the mics really okay yeah just to let's try it just the box. Okay, just the box. Let's try it out, guys. And then put your clip your box to the um, <clears throat> to your collar. Okay, let's try it. What do you guys think? Hopefully, okay. the, the hopefully the audio okay. is better. We'll try. We'll check it out. Um, let's see. Question, question, question. Oh yeah. Um, Anthony says, hey, it's been a while since I've tuned into your channel. Last thing I remember, you got banned from eBay and was going to stop selling on the platform. Are you yeah. back? I'm not. Not back on eBay right now. Um, I have not um, been reinstated, nor do I think I will be, at least anytime soon. Um, so currently, I'm looking for another platform to sell on beyond my own website. Although, I don't know. Do you guys think I should just continue on my own website? The first month on my own website was 20000 which is respectable, right? Considering I started at zero. So um, it does help having an audience, but I could just post my items on on my website, like my actual pre-owned items. Um, instead of, I mean, wholesale is nice, but all the items I posted individually have sold. Like I put a Nike hoodie up for $15, it sold. I put up a, um, a Carhartt beanie for $14, it sold. So I don't know. There's... Um, less of an incentive to offer um like on my website i'm doing all free shipping because there's no seller protection i i don't have to accept best offers and i i, I do have um i have buyer pays return i don't have seller pays returns but i don't have that discount that ebay has so i would rather sell on ebay because the return process is much easier on ebay and the top rated seller discount is worth it to offer free returns Selling on my own website, it's very challenging to offer free returns because a few, like it would be very expensive to offer free returns not having that discount. So I think a lot of people on eBay don't think about that, but um, I'm not no longer on eBay. Currently, I'm selling on my own website, but I was going to try and do Poshmark, but I don't want to share. And I'm not interested in, in paying for a bot or a VA. That sounds like nonsense to me. So I'd rather... You'd rather use that money to get more items from my customers than to spend it on somebody that's not even related to my company. Mm -hmm. Spencer says, do you use the Husky shelf you recommended with the 26 by 14 by 12 boxes? I need a storage system that works. I did and do still have one version of my inventory in the other unit that's 26 by 14 by 12. I then modified it to 30 by 10 by 10. I'm sorry, 30 by 8 by 8. And I recommend, I have lots of inventory videos on my channel. Um, the one that I recommend the most is the most recent one. And in that video, I recommend you test a bunch of different boxes depending on what you sell. Um, I sold almost 99% jeans and pants. That's why my inventory system was um, set up with those specific items and those specific bags. That's why I chose that. So again, it depends on the exact items you sell, what kind of box you should have. Husky shelves, the reason why I like them is that they're like indestructible and they maintain all their value. These rolling black shelves that I have degrade over time. So it's more expensive, in my opinion, to buy something that you have to throw away versus the Husky shelves will probably last longer than I do. How's the audio, guys? Is it better? Yeah, let us know. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see. Alex says, has anyone tried the new eBay fulfillment service FBA? Yeah, they have. Um, 
It works better with people who sell replenishable items, but I know it's all right. It's just um, eBay outsourcing another form of fulfillment to customers, and it's, it's all right, but I wouldn't recommend doing it. It's also expensive, and, and most people can't afford um, outsourcing anything. So, like, if you're making less than $10,000 a month profit, you can't afford any of these extra services. So, um, how many people in the chat are earning less than $10,000 profit? Probably most of you. So, that's just saying you should just be doing everything on your own because it's cheaper and faster. Using a, a 3PL service to fulfill your items doesn't make sense to me because you need that money, or I need that money. I, I don't want to pay somebody else to do it when it's cheaper for me to do it. Mm -hmm. AJ says, does anyone know an easy way to get sweat stains off of a white t-shirt? They're trying not to use bleach. Well, that's a great question. I would like to know myself. <laughs> I don't buy white t-shirts for mm. that reason. It's like a difficult to remove stains. Any discoloration is difficult. Um, people do soak shirts in some kind of vinegar solution to remove those stains. You can spot treat. Um, I think Tide pens have worked well for me in the past, removing some small discolorations. But um, nowadays, I just point at the item during the description instead of trying to remove it. And if the customer wants to remove it, they can remove it. I'll give them a couple bucks because the amount of time it takes to rescue a shirt is just typically not worth it to me. Mm. Mark says, Chris, Tech often says to go slow, but he also says that he has always stayed hungry. How do you balance those two mindsets when running a business? It's the same thing. Um, when you are going slow, you are thinking. That's really the part that you don't do, actually, if you're not hungry. Hungry means you think more. So, like, I was um, watching this person on Instagram, and he said, I'm on the streets multiplying my money every day. And I was like, okay, that's actually the best advice I've ever heard. Okay, because <laughs> multiplying money requires thinking. Okay, you've got to think. Okay, I've got, I've got a couple bucks, right? I've got, um, let's see, I got some, some money for props later. I've got a couple <laughs> bucks, right? And I want to multiply this money. So how do I take a couple bucks, right, and turn it into more money? That requires a lot of thinking, right? So, I don't know. I just, that was one of the best pieces of advice ever because it's the same thing. Going slow, if you're thinking a lot, you are going slow. You can't go fast because most of the time you're thinking, you're only taking small actions to get to the next level. So, um, versus just taking any action. So, I think being hungry and going slow are the same thing. Um, so, if you're just thinking, I'm out here trying to multiply my money, that makes it easier. That's, a, that's an easier way of looking at it. Like, if I told you guys all right now that if you listed a 30 items today, I would give you a, um, a wad of money, everyone would be like, oh my God, I'm going to figure out how to list 30 items today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to multiply zero into this, this, this pile of money. The thing is, that is what eBay is. eBay is all the items that you list turn into money. So, like, if you're not thinking about it that way, I think you're in big trouble because I didn't think about it in the beginning. I was like, I'm just going to list items. I didn't think, and I've always understood that listing more items gives you more opportunities, but I didn't understand the quality part. I didn't understand list every item to the best of my ability, not what's the least amount I can put into the listing to grow. So let me give you guys an example. There is a popular virtual assistant company that's connecting inventory to resellers and doing all the listing. That is the worst recipe for disaster ever. Look at what ThreadUp did. ThreadUp took all the junk from across America. They put it all in the one warehouse, which is here in the Bay Area. They have 800,000 items in stock. They list 3,000 items a day. The company loses $5 million a month. They lose money faster than any company in the reselling industry I've ever seen. They just burn millions of dollars going negative. Their stock has lost 93% of its value this year because that's the worst recipe ever. Listing, listing, listing. No idea if the item is profitable or not. Right? So take a step back, go slow. What was the question? Uh, the difference between going slow and oh, also... Yeah. So just going, going slow <laughs> and thinking is how you multiply money. And that is blowing my mind. Like it's... Um, yeah, it's blown my mind. I think that that one concept is going to make me $10 million. That sounds 
Sounds weird, right? Starting at zero, I would be very, unless something bad happens to me, I, I imagine like, and that's, that's a small amount of money for a lot of people, but it's a huge amount of money for most people. So I just think, because all I have to do is wait. I just do the right things over and over again and wait. That's, that's the key. Instead of worrying about other people, I can just control my own destiny by multiplying money at home. And I just didn't, I didn't never thought about it that way. Because if you were at home thinking, how do I turn this dollar into two? And that's the way you were brought up in the reselling community. Instead of the way I was brought up, which was like, I watched popular YouTubers and just copied them. That's not how you do it. Because in the first three or four years, I... I was kind of, kind of spinning my wheels. I was earning a living, but not really getting ahead. And then once I turned into this multiplying money thing, I'm getting way ahead. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be making more personal finance videos as well because I'm excited to see how long it will take. Maybe you guys can guess. How long is it going to take to turn negative $1,000 into a million? I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> um, some people might, maybe Grant Cardone can do it in 90 days. I don't know. It's, I think it's going to take me several years. Mm -hmm. Robin Marie has a comment. Hello. Robin, what's up? <laughs> hello, hello. I'm a huge fan and supporter of you and your team. Have been yep. following you for one year. Started selling in February. I just became a top plus seller with 57 positive feedback at 100%. Thank you so wow. much for your wisdom. Thank you. What a testimonial. I love that. <laughs> so I think my love language is acts of service, guys, because um, I want to provide information that's useful. But I now realize that... Um, I don't know if dismissive is the right word, but dismissive means that you don't give things credit, right? Mm. Um, and I don't want to be dismissive. What I want to be is I want you guys to shift your focus on the things that provide greater value. Mm. But I've been accused of being dismissive, which means I say that whatever ideas you come up with, they're worthless. And that's not what I'm trying to say. If I was trying to say that, then I would be telling myself that most of my ideas on my channel are worthless. What I'm saying is you want to prioritize more valuable things, okay? Like having quality listings and good items to begin with. So 90% of reselling, maybe you guys should pause, pause, smash the like button, and consider subscribing right now. Maybe get a journal to write this down. 90% of reselling is finding the right item, okay? Then 10% of it, or let's say 9% of it, 9% of it is developing a listing habit and routines, right? One percent of it is everything else. Promoted listings, worrying about scam artists, returns, reseller news, attending eBay Open. All of those things are one percent. Nine percent is your listing, your listing and procedures. Ninety percent is find, be, picking the right item to begin with. Um, so that's not me being dismissive of the one percent of things. It's just me focusing on the two things that get you there. Becoming an expert in your category. Where do you get it? How can you get it at a price that's profitable? Do you, under, do you have enough money to buy it? Next is, do you have the systems to list it, photograph it, ship it, fulfill it? <laughs> is that, uh, hopefully that makes sense. And, mm -hmm. and I, um, yeah, let me know if it comes across as dismissive. Probably to some people, but that's not my intent. Um, Life is Origami says, what's your opinion on AliExpress? I like AliExpress. Um, the problem is that most people who delve into it are not experts. So you end up buying 400 of something you barely know anything about, and you don't know the features, the products, the benefits. You don't know the pricing. You don't know how, comp how competitive it is. You don't know if you're competing against the actual manufacturer. So uh, it might be selling on eBay for $10 right now, and you can buy it on AliExpress for 50 cents or Alibaba, right? So you're thinking, okay, 50 cents to $10, that's a good margin, right? And then you buy it, and then once you start listing it on eBay, the person selling it at 10 drops it to four. Now you're in big trouble because you, you paid 50 cents for it, and you selling it at $4, you lose money after shipping. So that's my opinion is that you either go all in and you become an expert in whatever said product that you pick, so this is kind of funny because before my video, I'm, if you guys have seen this, let me know. You've seen ads for run for Amazon products. Like you can, this stupid thing makes millions of dollars a year, right? That is actually true. 
Okay, what they don't tell you is that that stupid thing is somebody's life work. They've been doing that stupid thing for 10 straight years and they are the manufacturer and they went to China and they did product control and they, they did all the homework and figured out that's a useful thing that can be sold profitably. Um, so also let me know in the chat if, um, if you can hear me okay. It is possible to become an expert faster. Uh, it's just unlikely. Usually it takes a while. Mm -hmm. Cam Perry says, is the postage on top rated plus free returns extra discounted via eBay? Uh, I think so. I think it's extra super discounted. There's commercial plus and then there's commercial plus plus top rated seller, which is better. So there's retail, commercial, commercial plus eBay top rated seller, which is a very, very good discount. Mm. The salesman says, can you describe the different mindsets between selling pre-owned items on eBay versus doing retail arbitrage on eBay? Yes. Um, selling a pre-owned item means you're only competing against yourself because there is no other item on earth with the exact same condition as yours. So you can adjust it accordingly and sort of maybe even price your item above market because there's 10 jackets, there's 10 Arcteryx jackets for sale. Um, yours is green and yours has the logo but not the written text. Yours has a little bit of a tear on the sleeve, whatever, right? So these types of things you can add benefits and values by adjusting all the different features. When you're selling a brand new item retail arbitrage, those things don't really matter because it's brand new and all the items you're competing against are the same. So when they're all the same, you only have one tool, that's the hammer, lower your prices, right? So that's why most people who sell retail arbitrage have the first in or last out, first out or last out mentality. I'm either gonna wait for everybody to sell out and I'll sell my size eight pair of filas for 140, or I'm gonna sell for 39.99 right now because it's cheaper than all the other categories and all the other brands. And remember, retail arbitrage, sometimes you have to be cheap enough for the competition to buy that instead of yours. I'm sorry, buy yours instead of the competition. That's why sometimes when you search for Patagonia jacket, a North Face jacket will pop up because they're trying to get to the customer. Hey, look, you can get this used Patagonia jacket for 79.99 or somebody's blown out brand new North Face for 49.99, right? And that person might cross over. They love Patagonia, Patagonia die hard. Somebody presents them a North Face that's brand new for 20 bucks less, they switch teams. That mm -hmm. happens all the time and um, the mentality is different. If I was selling brand new items, I would be way more cutthroat. Um, I, would, I would take no prisoners. I would try to get every sale. But if I'm selling pre-owned stuff, a little bit more, a peaceful kind of guy and before uh, I would say in November of 2021 I was I switched gears a little bit from peaceful guy to um, maybe sort of a beginner wartime Chris because I started discounting way heavier so like in November 2021 I started um, I switched to some of the money all the time and um, before that I was kind of most of the money some of the time so i switch gears a little bit and the turn on my inventory is much faster now so i i don't mind buying something for a dollar and getting one dollar back profit i don't need to have such a higher rate of return so now that i'm thinking more about cycles so the person earlier asked about how do they make two hundred thousand pounds in a year a lot of cycles selling stuff all the way out because if you sell, if you buy ten items and only sell nine, those of you who do retail arbitrage, if you buy ten items and only sell eight, you didn't even get your money back. You need to sell the last two to get the money and the profit back. So that's why it's difficult with with um, retail arbitrage versus pre-owned. Sometimes you buy one item. I'm sorry. Sometimes you buy three items and you sell one. You got all your money back. Mm -hmm. So it just depends on the, the model. Mm -hmm. The artist says, is it better to get a P.O. box, UPS box, or just use your own address when shipping? I use a P.O. box, um, and I have a UPS store address, and I have my home address, and I recommend, um, I recommend the, the UPS store, to be honest. The post office box is nice, but they don't accept packages for you. If you're going to be in the resale business, it's nice getting a relationship with your local UPS because you're gonna sell some items. Like as an example, the wholesale that I have at dailyrefinement.com um, is all UPS. So um, 
having that local UPS store address is nice because also people don't know my real address. Although it is interesting being, being a, uh, if you decide to be a YouTuber or a reseller, um, people can kind of look you up. So be prepared for that. If you're going to resell, they'll lose some of your privacy, especially if people find out you're selling a, 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 like a really good at one replenishable, people will try and figure out your supplier. Um, if you're selling um, cardboard boxes, like as an example, these cardboard boxes cost like $6 and they sell around, I don't know, a couple million of these boxes sell per day. If somebody knew that, they'd be trying to figure out how to copy them. So the extreme version of this is that these boxes that I have are manufactured here in the States. So it'd be very difficult for you to copy this company because they make the boxes here. So that's like a huge competitive advantage. So that's what happens when you go all the way to the final frontier. And that's why I recommend a PO box um, or UPS store, um, not your home address because you don't want people coming to your house. No Conorn 12. Sorry if I said that wrong. Um, says, I sell sports cards. I have yep. tons of great photos, the lowest prices, and free 30-day returns. Yep. Still, only 5% of my listings are in the top 20 of search results. What should I do to improve? Pick different cards to sell would be number one. Mm. Um, and that's challenging because essentially what's happening there is that um, you're not getting into the above the fold, which is, means people aren't seeing your listing. So... I personally would adjust the types of cards that I'm buying and I would pay for a much higher promoted listings rate. That's what I would do because I'm not getting the visibility I want, so I have to pay for it. That's me, you know, in my pretzel example, if I'm at the mall and I am selling um, delicious pretzels that people can smell, then I don't need the best placement because people can smell it and they'll come in, right? But if I'm selling um, scrambled eggs, not very good, right? Scrambled eggs is not a good offering at the food court. Much it'd be, It would be the least tasty thing in the entire food court. I would need to spend up and get the number one um, spot right when people walk in and just get lucky that people are like, you know what? Scrambled eggs seems good today. That, that You'd have to get that lucky in order to sell something. But if you're not able to make it into the top search ranking, um, your listings might not be high quality, so you're not totally optimizing them. And also, you might be selling non-desirable teams or players, and you might not be promoting, promoting enough. Mm -hmm. Francis says, are auctions better than buy it now? According to eBay, yes, which is not true. Because um, <laughs> on the eBay listing, I just downloaded the app last week to look at it, and it said, if you want the most money, list it on auction. Okay, that's not true. That's from, that's from eBay. That's totally wrong. Unless you have... You're selling something extraordinarily rare and popular and in demand. For it to sell over market value via auction is very rare. I, I, I don't like the fact that eBay says that really blows my mind. It's not true. Okay. Like, do you guys tell me in the chat? If things sold for more on auction, wouldn't everyone just do auction? What's the point? What is the point of doing buy now? If auctions only take seven days and you get the most money, that is so misleading. eBay itself tells customers when they sign up, if you want the most money, list it on the auction. You know what they're really saying? We're guaranteed to get paid if you list it as an auction mm -hmm. at a penny. Do one penny free shipping. We're guaranteed to make a profit because it will sell. Mm -hmm. And they'll charge the customer a fee and they get paid. But I can't, I, I, it is beyond me. Who at eBay thinks that's good advice to tell sellers that? Like, that's, I don't know, that's like, um, as the kids would say, that hits different. Ha, uh, like, why would they do that? It's so odd to me that they would tell people the auctions, get them the most money. If they said, if you auction your items, you'll get your money faster, okay, I can, I can accept that. Because you list it for a, le a low price, a few people see it, somebody bids on it, you get your money back quick, sure. Get the most money, though, that's wrong. That's totally wrong advice and not true. Otherwise, what's the point of listing anything? Buy it now. So buy it now if you want the most money, but you have to wait. Auction if you want your money now and you want just a little bit of money. Auctions sell for like, depending on how popular it is, between 85 and 1% of the value. Um, there's a guy that Lux Swap on, on eBay. He has amazing items. 
Sometimes he'll list a Prada fur coat that's worth two thousand, and it'll end at forty dollars. So I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I'm if you guys are ready to take that kind of kick in the nuts, but uh, that's brutal. Starting everything at one dollar and letting it ride. Um, that's eBay's guaranteed payday, but you might be just left with the scraps. That's really difficult. Mm. And I, I think, I think the people say the audio is better. Yeah. Okay. We'll just do this from now on. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. Shell's world says, does sticking to a niche attract more people to your shop? Do you think? Yes. Um, because more people like you're attracted to people who are better at their, their thing. Like, if you wanted a plumber, I always look for the person with the most reviews. I don't want someone's first time. Like, that doesn't seem, not to me personally, I don't want my doctor to be like, this is my first operation. Um, I'm going to Google something real quick. Hold on a second. That doesn't, I, I would make me nervous. <laughs> I don't want that. I want him to be like, this is my 6,389th <laughs> surgery. Right. I can do this with my eyes closed. Want to see? I don't want to see, but that's like a, <laughs> the level of expertise. That, of course, people are way more attracted to it if you are good at it. So I asked this question in the chat this morning, which was, would you rather be good at a few things or do everything kind of mediocre? Mm -hmm. Because it's different. And some people, if you're really honest with yourself, you might choose everything mediocre because it's more, more fun, right? More fun to do something different every single day. But if you've been following reselling for a while and you look at the OG resellers, do they look tired to you? Okay, because doing something different every single day is exhausting. If, if you, I don't know, if you guys think I look tired now, you should have been watching me five years ago. I was way more stressful. My, my blood pressure literally went down after niching down, right? Mm -hmm. So I have way more space. I have way more time. I think I hang out with my family more than most people. Like 25 hours, myself and my baby, and then 15 hours with just myself and my wife. That's 40 hours a week of family time. That's a full-time family effort. Right, so some people are saying, I oh, I'm too I like my family too much to do reselling. I don't know if that's true because maybe when you're with your family, you're you're, you're checking messages or listing, you took photos on Saturday and you're listing throughout the week. You're you're subtracting family time when you're with your kids and you're sub, you're listing on your phone. That's not the same thing as getting your work done in the morning and then being fully present with your kid. It's very different, I know, because like my daughter knows immediately if I'm on my phone. So what is the point of that? It's like almost it's better if I'm not there because she knows I'm not paying attention. It might make her throw her food across the, 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 the kitchen to get my attention. So I think it's really important to niche down so you have more time. And I don't know if you guys would rather be mediocre at a lot of things, but I'm trying myself to work on this. Like um, Isaiah in the morning call asked a very uh, on-point question, which was, why do people do that? Most people say they want to be good at a few things. How come they end up doing a bunch of things mediocre? And it's because of what I talked about in the beginning of the video. It's easier to start over. Like for everyone right now listening, if you wanted to learn how to play the guitar, you could go buy a guitar today and by the end of the day, you'll probably know one chord, right? So now you're like level one guitar player. But like going from level one guitar player to level 100 guitar player might take you 20 years. So like it's easier to be like, you know what, last week was a guitar, this week I'm a watercolor painter. I went to Joanne's, I got my full set up, the aisle, I'm a watercolor painter. Start doing it for a while, now you need to learn how to blend colors and how things make things look realistic or make things look abstract. It gets a little harder, I give up. Next week I'm going to be a quilter. People do that, they just bounce from one thing to the other because the first level one, level two was so easy that people, they love easy. Yeah. But, like, I'll, I'm trying to teach you guys how to love how to do something hard. It's hard. Like, mm. um, I'm trying to save people time. That's hard. I'm trying to entertain you. That's just me going out and finding cool stuff. So, I already know that I was telling Christine that my, my views are not really going to spike because I don't tell you guys anything insane. This is a reminder channel. I'm just reminding you of the things you need to do. So, sort of my channel is going to stay like this, and I'm okay with that because my channel will probably last forever. There's a lot of reselling channels that are gone too. So I want to just keep this same pace. Maybe once in a while I get a little boop and go up a little <laughs> bit, but I don't, I'm going to be in my niche, which is reselling stuff. Mm -hmm. If I started talking about cooking next week, some people would unsubscribe. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Thank you for the super chat, Tan. Thank you. Um, they say, on my way to 100K gross this year, many thanks to you. List Appreciate 10 a day it. with about 10 sales a day. Currently not offering returns, but we want to grow. Will free returns definitely improve sales? Thanks. Yes, because there's people who click free returns on the left side hand navigation, and it gives the buyers a greater sense of trust. Um, your sales will immediately go up. And the top rated seller discount's worth it. So if you're really, really good at selling and you don't have any returns, you net more money offering free returns. That's really the, the main kicker. You make more money, you net more money because you get a discount on the final value fee. So it's, I don't know if it's true in the UK, but it's true in the US where final value discount is discounted if you're top rated seller. Mm -hmm. Spirit Healing Taro says, Chris, I don't know how to stay on a schedule for even only a couple <clears throat> hours a day. Help, please. Okay. So this is going to come down to just thinking about your priorities. I have a schedule course. Yeah. So, um, on Skillshare. On Skillshare. I'll throw it in the chat right now. So then <laughs> you, you take this course and it will help you make a schedule. Uh, it's free. Mm -hmm. Let me get it for everybody. Um, yeah, you guys are free to answer questions. I'm going to be off screen for one moment while I get this. Okay. Ask questions. Also, uh, there's the tray. <laughs> let's see. But yeah, keeping a schedule is huge. Um, wow, this is so embarrassing. Only 48 people have taken my class. That, that, that's kind of embarrassing. Oops, that's the wrong link. That looks like a link, that's a tracking number. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Guys, help me out. That's my Skillshare course on how to make a schedule and how to be good at time management, um, please take it. It's free. Okay, mm -hmm. sign up for Skillshare. Help, you, help me out. It's a free resource I created for everyone, and it should help you a lot. Please mm -hmm. take that course. All right, another question. Yep. George says, when you get a second eBay store, can you use all the same information as your first? Um, kind of. You, you technically cannot list the same item using two eBay stores. That's a, against the terms of use. Mm -hmm. So, But in terms of signing up for one, I think. Like you can. Like same you can, email. You can, use, and... you can use the exact same information, the mm -hmm. exact same email. Okay. has to be a... Actually, I'm pretty sure you can use the exact same bank account. Mm. Everything can be the same. Thank you, Andrea, for the super chat. Thank you. Thank you for the super chat. appreciate that. Um, yep. Yeah. All right, let's see. I kind of want to try a YouTube auction, but I don't know how to do that. Do you guys know how to do that? Is that an official thing? It's not an official thing. Okay. I think I just say, I'm selling this, and then the bids go, and then we go, three, two, one, and then the last <laughs> bidder stops, and then, I don't know, maybe you guys can check mm. and tell me how to do it. I'm mostly on whatnot, but I just want to try one. Mm -hmm. I want to try one of these things, so... Uh, Noah Trussell says, I have 1 million impressions and my click-through is 0.4%. I okay. started in February of 2022. Okay. My total sales are 17,400 okay. and 443 items have sold. When should I start hiring one person to take pictures? Shipping is very fast for me. Um, when you're at $10,000 a month profit. I would hire one person part-time to help you take photos. That's my recommendation. Um, or if you want to really follow our, our advice, you wouldn't hire someone until you need help shipping. And because shipping doesn't take you very long, that means you have to have a pretty big business to hire someone to help sh ship first. But I will tell you that I no longer ship items, and it's a huge... Um, it's better than... Um, it's a better use of your time to list while somebody else ships because shipping is less easy to... Like, it's more uniform. Listing requires more thinking. So um, it's a little bit different. My recommendation is $10,000 a profit. If you want to hire a photographer, I would go part-time photographer at that point. So that's around twenty-five to 30000 a month in sales. So for you, if you're at 17000 since February, that's like March, April, May, June, July. It's five months, so around three k. I'd say around, if you continue the same path, two or three years from now. Uh, growing at the same pace, you'd be ready for your first part-time. And that sounds like 
no, I want to hire them now. But I, <laughs> I, my re recommendation is to wait until you're at 25, 30K a month. Mm. Along that note, the KV company says was they were thinking of hiring someone to do listings. Yep. Is commission based on listing sales a good payment method or per listing? Don't do it. <laughs> Don't hire someone to list for you until you're at $10,000 a month profit. It will ruin your store. Don't let people do that because they're not an expert. You're not an expert. That's a recipe for slow sales, big store of stuff that never sells. So don't do that um, hourly. No per piece. Per piece means the person is just going to list as many items as possible. Um, so hourly. Hourly for everything. And then people do as much as they can work the entire time. Mm -hmm. That's the expectation you should create. Not the um, Because what happens is you continue to do your job over and over again. It gets easier and easier and easier. Because uh, it gets more streamlined. So you don't want your people going home at noon, right? You want to try to, like for me, I'm trying to make videos three hours a day. I'm trying to do my best and make as many videos as I can during three hours a day. I don't make one video and then if we're done early, just stop because that doesn't help you get ahead. You get no draft bank. You, there's no margin. So you've got to be able to do your work quick, do more of it. Um, never hire out your listings. I learned the hard way, um, but don't do that. Don't hire out listings ever. Thank you, PH, for the super chat. Thank you, thank you, guys. Um, if you do a super chat, your question will show up higher, but it's not required, guys. Actually, the last two, they don't have any questions. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you. Yep. Um, let's see. Sassy's OZ's. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I probably said that horribly. She says, just starting. Do you have a free course on setting up on eBay? It seems a bit overwhelming as compared to Poshmark. So now that we're in the August, our, our course is a benefit of our um, year-long mentorship. So patreon.com, if you sign up for the annual version, you, um, you get our course. Um, and it really takes a lot longer than that to, to build a business. So if you're, that's why we have it as a bonus of the one-year mentorship instead of a you get it and then you can just do it because um, it takes a while. Free, I don't have that because it, it just takes a lot of resources to create that. So I do have 1,300 YouTube videos to help you, but a step-by-step -step starting from zero. Um, I recommend you go back to my Restart Nirvana Challenge, which was last year. But essentially what it is, I'm going to be starting it again shortly, is just you starting with an item around the house, sell that, take that profit, buy something else over and over and over again. Do not get ahead of yourself. If you are a beginner, do not go randomly buying items. That's a recipe for, for horrible failure. Mm -hmm. PH, go ahead and ask your question, and I'll, end, I'll, I'll ask it. Yeah. Um, Mignon <laughs> Cookman says, you appear to not like eBay's auction system, but why do you like WhatNot? Okay, this is why. WhatNot, you can be entertaining and make the value go up. You can't do that on eBay. Mm. Um, live auction QVC does really, really well. I've been to a few live auctions, and this is the thing. I can't believe this did not click for me. Okay. I went to one storage unit auction. Okay, you guys ready? Um, I went to the storage unit auction. The auction was for a five by five unit. Okay, so I'm six feet tall. I don't know if you guys can see. Five feet would be like, like this, okay? This is how big it is, five by five, okay? Um, I don't know if this is some kind of joke because YouTubers that talk about storage units bid them up or something. Inside the unit was, um, I already forgot the question, but inside the unit was, a bunch of files, um, two pairs of shoes, a guitar case, and an alcohol. Tons of alcohol. This guy's alcohol collection. And not like high-end, like low-end Jose Cuervo was, was the alcohol that was in there. Okay, So I'm like, okay, sweet. I, I'm going to do the math on this. It looks like the stuff in the unit is worth $75. That's my thought, right? So I'm going to bid like $13 and so I can try to make some profit on this. I'm going to go as high as $13. I got there, um, Locker Nuts was there. If you guys watched their YouTube channel, they were giving me the eye. Like they knew I was on YouTube. I knew they're on YouTube. Okay, let the bidding begin. It sold for $500. This lot, this ridiculous five by five thing full of nothing sold for $500. And I'm like, ask the guy, I'm like, hey, um, can I help you clean out the unit? Cause this is my storage unit. You're here and I'll help you clean it out for free. Cause I'm curious, what did you just buy for $550? Um, it was worth nothing. It was worth less than 75. 
The only thing it was worth was there was three pairs of shoes that were worth around $40 and I bought those shoes for 10. So I, I'm shocked. But what was the question? You appear to not like eBay's auction system. Oh, that, this system. is why. Okay. But In the live auction, it's mm -hmm. exciting. That's why. I, it didn't occur to me that it was fun. The guy that was bidding $550 thought it was fun. That's why I like Whatnot. Because Whatnot is fun. You can add value to it. And now with the experience-based thing, it works. eBay is way less fun. Like mm. it's, it's a longer period. It's a week. It's three days. It's five days. It's so competitive. You get the opportunity when you're at home to compare every single item that's like that on auction. On uh, Whatnot, it's just you and your audience. Uh, Whatnot suggests that you only need 20 or 30 customers. You're building a relationship with them. It's very different. So, I don't, I, you know, Whatnot is weird. I don't even really consider it um, e-commerce. It's like, um, it's more related to entertainment. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't know, a live auction site, I feel like without that entertainment, without the host, it makes it very difficult. Like it's not, it's just, uh, what is it called? Like race to the bottom without the host. And live auction, people overpay. Like QVC, Cindy Crawford will sell earrings for $90. Why? These same $90 earrings are $4 free shipping on eBay. Literally. Like a hundred times more expensive on QVC. Well, well, you guys tell me, why does it sell for more on QVC? Nothing. is is All of it is like no-name brand and it sells for tons of money on QVC. Why is that? Mm -hmm. It has to. I think it's because it's fun, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. And the person and who's the person presenting and the person. it. I, I yeah. don't know. You guys tell me what you think in the chat. Maybe... Christine can read some answers. I don't know why QVC things sell for more than eBay. Mm -hmm. Same items. Um, Neko says, is 2.2% click-through good? Depends on the category. Mm -hmm. um, click-through means when they see the 10 listings. Okay, so what that means is 2.2. Um, okay, let's say that you had 100 listings in a row and it's all you, right? And a person scrolls through all of that and they click two of them on average, right? Mm -hmm. That, if that's good or not, depends on what it is. If it's all Louis Vuitton for $20, that's a horrible click-through rate. Because if I was seeing Louis Vuitton as authentic, I'd be clicking on all 100 and I'd be buying all 100, <laughs> right? But if it's, um, I don't know, generic hoop earring, then two out of 100 might be amazing because it's so competitive, right? There's so many people selling gold hoop earrings Maybe that's really good. So it depends on your category. So I would just compare your click-through rate now versus last month instead of across categories because you don't know. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the super chat, John. Are there pros slash cons on using capitalization on eBay listing titles slash descriptions? For example, having a title in all caps to stand out. Okay, guys. So this is a cool tip. Write this down, please. It's the <laughs> site Convert. Uh, what is it? Convert. <laughs> Oh my God, I forgot. There's a site that helps you convert things to um, capitalized case. Mm -hmm. Let me look it up. Let's see. <laughs> convert case. Okay. Convert case. It's called convert case. I thought so. So convertcase.net. Convertcase.net. So it'll help you convert all those wacky capitalization titles into a format like capitalized case which is what i recommend so um what's the question um are there pros and cons on using capitalization in the titles or description okay so i think it looks professional to have every word in the title capitalized because that's how a book title looks that's mm -hmm. how titles are typically written um, but if you go all capitalized on the brand um, i feel like it's a bit heavier so like Ralph Lauren, all caps, sounds more important. A bit, it sounds a little bit like yelling also, but it's like a little more emphasis. So yes, the pros and cons would be you can emphasize certain words using all caps and all lower caps would be kind of like a, um, non, like a casual way of presenting it. Like Ralph Lauren, all lowercase, that's like somebody at the pool casually <laughs> listing their item. Ralph Lauren, all caps, that's somebody standing holding the item in front of you. That's how I look at it. It's different. It depends on the, the vibe of the, 
the seller. I've seen, and I kind of like this, the full capitalized brand, everything else capitalized case. That's sort of like, I think the most catchy, um, but I personally used capitalized case, which means the first letter is capitalized. Pros and cons, not a huge difference, just more styling. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the, in the, um, the capitalized case where like every other word is, every other letter is capitalized, that's like, <laughs> no. <laughs> people do that. Uh, They'll go, wow, lowercase w, capital uh, O, lowercase w. Wow, like, wow. <laughs> so that is catchy, but I don't know if that's, it's kind of unprofessional. Yeah. It's also harder to read. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you probably want it to be pretty easy to read. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you want um, it easier to read. Yeah. So PH says, they, they gave that super chat earlier. Okay. Um, wanted to say thank you for all you do to help other resellers. It also doesn't hurt that you're easy on the eyes. Oh, Married thank you. Women. Thank you. So thank not you. flirting, just giving a compliment. Appreciate that. Thanks again, Chris. <laughs> um, and I guess this is the... Um, like, these are all the same. Speaking of PH, right? So we got fat, PHAT with the P lowercase, next three, hat, all caps, and then the like mixed caps, it's the same for the buyer. It's is just, it though? Is it? I don't know. Do you not buy it because of that? I feel infuriated by that. Some people do it like that though. Oh my God. Some people do that. They write it. Like this looks like this is meant to be like as a brand, like the brand yeah, itself, like, yeah. like iPhone, you know how yeah, I yeah, is yeah. lowercase. Yeah. But I don't know if that would make a difference, right? I think it. I think it is annoying <laughs> sometimes to read stuff like that, especially in emails. Oh, um, I don't know what you guys think. You can put it in the chat. No, don't, don't type like that. Some people <laughs> type like that though. I don't know. Oh goodness. <laughs> yeah, some people do type like that. Thank you for the super chat, Ryan. He says, "What size power station would you suggest to run lights for a photo booth in a?" 10 by 15 unit for six hours. Been looking at Echo Flow, but not sure what size. The 300 to 500 um, watt one. They're usually between three and $500. That's the amount of power that you need. Um, the one that I bought was $600 and it lasted like 12 hours. That's a bit overkill. Don't really need that. Um, one thing you can do, which I thought, I don't know if this is silly or not, but um, I used a solar power um, I'm, what is that called? Um, solar panel to mm. charge mine because I live in California. And um, it's sunny enough here that it can charge the whole thing overnight where you don't need to use electricity from your house. And it does work. If you plug your, if you have the, the two, is it male, the double male adapter, you can plug in your memory bank into the wall and you, it'll pay you, it'll pay you. You can actually put money back into your own electric, electric account. So depending on which one you get, if you live somewhere sunny, you can kind of offset it with the solar. That's how I did it. Um, I could get up to, this is way more work than it was worth. I could get up to $1 a day in electricity. And I was doing this because um, I was listening to Beat the Bush and he was like, how do you live in California for $10,000? And I was like, I don't know. I'm going to watch all your videos. So then he does calculations like this. And I was thinking, okay, maybe I can use this to offset the cost of it. Cause it was expensive. It was $600 for my thingy, my bobber and then another 150 for the solar panel. So, um, I ended up, I think making my money back over the course of a couple of years using that. But the, let me see if I can find the, um, I have one in my link, but the, let's see the amount of power. Mm. Um, the one I got was, uh, let's see, the capacity was 505 watt hours. The one I got was, was 505 watt hours and it was overkill. So maybe 300 to 400. Mm. Yeah. Very cool. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of want a B.O.B. bag, so if you guys have any, or a bug out bag. Is that what it's called? Is it a B.O.B. bag? I want a bug out bag, because right now all I have is a, is a knife. So if the apocalypse happened, that's all I would have with me. And I think I need more survival stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
We are at 64 minutes. Nice. Let's do um, five more questions. Let's go, guys. <laughs> Appreciate you. Go to my site, dailyrefinement.com. Buy something. Um, have some good wholesale boxes together. The pants are the best deal, $150 for 45 pieces. Um, and again, just like that earlier question, waist inseam are going to be your best bet. Also, thank you, Robin Marie. You're very sweet. <laughs> Um, Judith Wilson says, I have a basic store. Yep. My listing routine last month was mostly five items seven days a week. The last week was seven items a day. The last couple of items were getting charged 25 cents. I am a top rated seller. I couldn't figure out how I could have gone over. I thought the limit was 1000 items for the month. Um, it's, it's cumulative. So if you did any ending or relisting, those would have counted too. I don't know how many items are in your store. But it might be time to upgrade to the next store subscription. Um, I think Judith might have a basic store subscription that goes up to 1000 Or I'm not sure if the premium, you need the, pe the premium. Mm -hmm. I think it's, um, maybe she can give me a few more details. But usually it's because you have actually used all of them up. Or you're using promotional ones. And it might be $0.25 cents per listing at the basic level anyway. Um, and you're just using promotional ones that are cheaper. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't worry too much about that because if your item sells, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Praetorian says, once you transfer your pictures to your listing computer, mm -hmm. do you separate or organize or rename the files in any way? Or do you just go straight to listing and import the photos from the original folder? I don't, I now drag them from the memory card into the listing straight into straight the, straight into into the listing or so, listing yeah so christine and i are going to make this video i'm going to write this down we're <laughs> going to do this transfer the photos directly over and show people because that's in our ebay white papers where we go over start to finish how to do it i say plug in the sd card into the sd card reader and then drag the photos from the sd card onto the listing directly don't transfer it to your computer um I say that, but I, that's not, I don't physically do that part of it, and I want to do that part of it. That's the only missing part. Everything else is, is literal, like you watch us do it. But um, don't transfer the photos. It takes way more time. No transferring. Mm -hmm. And no renaming. No, no, no transferring, no renaming. Don't put them in folders. I've seen amazing systems that are not necessary. Mm -hmm. So there's um, tools to rename and mass folders and just skip all that and just do it directly in. That's why I recommend only taking like the photos that you're going to list that day. Don't get thousands and thousands of folders that require photo management. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> another train. Three more and the train. Uh, JT Mayo yep. says, Chris, I run a store that sells four to $6,000 a month. Average sales price around $90 with net margins around 55%. I'm a thrift store picker. How would you scale? Well, how many listings a day? Um, they don't say how many listings a day, but they sell four hundred, four, I mean, four to six thousand a month. Yeah. Average sale price ninety dollars. Okay. Net margin around fifty-five percent. Oh my goodness! You ready? This is gonna. This advice is gonna sound horrible. Um, lower the average sale price. You gotta pick up the, the cheaper items along the way. That's how you scale. Mm. Like the four to six thousand is a beautiful place to be, especially when you're just learning. Fifty-five percent margins is killer. That means for every hundred dollars, fifty-five dollars is profit. So on the four to six k, what's the name? JT mm -hmm. is making two to thirty-five hundred dollars profit on on very very few items. We're talking about um, maybe five hundred items a month. So I'm guessing that's around fifteen to twenty items a day. That's a good place to be. 15 to 20 items a day, two to three grand. Most people listening right now would be psyched about that business because it's so small. That's like, um, what is that? Maybe 2,000 item store, I would guess. Um, that's nice, but the scale, you got to lower your ASP because unless you want to go twice as far, that would be the only way to scale because like in your area, there's only so much stuff to get. To get continue the $90 ASP, you'd have to make a bigger circle to find more of the stuff. And you're either gonna run out of time driving around or you're gonna run in the desert or something that does prevent you from going wider. So um, I would just lower my ASP and um, niche down to something that you can find more items of. And 
Typically, when I did that, my circle actually shrunk. I didn't need to go as far because my ASP shrunk. Mm, JT so, says that they did, they're doing 45 to 55 sales a month. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. That's the high, super high ASP. So that's only a few hundred items in stock. I love it. Mm. Yeah, 90. I did the math wrong. Sorry. Um, that's, re that's like a five listing a day store, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you want to, if you want to scale, it's just about increasing or decreasing your average sale price and increasing the volume. Unfortunately, I wish that I could sell hundreds of $90 items, but it's too difficult. Mm. Kay Denton says, I don't have Goodwill bins near me and my thrift stores don't have the good brands that most have. Any suggestions on how to make good money with cheaper brands? That's kind of a lazy question because it's like, I just want to make money with the cheaper stuff that I find and it doesn't really work that way. Like, um, I'll give you an example. Um, here's a cheaper brand that most people can find, Calvin Klein, right? Let me know. I mean, hopefully you can at least find Calvin Klein in your area. Um, last month, um, 15,000 Calvin Klein items sold. Okay, which is a lot. That's like more than entire categories on eBay. So just Calvin Klein, which people can find. You would need to go into the solds and look at the 15,000 items that sold under, um, under, I think they're under 20, what is it? I'm sorry. You need to look at the 500 sales a day and figure out why. Like, is it the, the price point, like they were just really, really cheap. Is it the style? Is it vintage Calvin Klein? You need to increase your Rolodex. You can't just mm -hmm. sell anything. That, mm -hmm. that, there is no um, way to do that. So cheaper items is okay, but that's in one of the biggest mistakes resellers make is that they only want cheap items. It'd be better to, to like, let me, get, let me ask you guys this. This Arcteryx jacket, let's say it sells on eBay for 110. What would you guys price it at? I'm sorry, what would you guys be willing to pay for it? Mm. If it sells for 110, what would you be willing to pay for the item? And there's gonna be people, I'm sure, that say no more than $1. Uh, that's just, that seems kind of low though. If you have to make $100 profit per item, it seems like it would be difficult to find. But you'll be surprised maybe at how high people are willing to pay. Mm -hmm. Let's see, maybe so I will do that. So improve your knowledge of the Of brands and then pay up. Improve your knowledge and then pay up. I, I wanna try that. What do you guys think? What do you guys think this jacket is worth? And what would you pay for it? So, I'm curious. let's see. <clears throat> Bozo the Clown says 50 ish. Tiger of Happiness says $70 if it's a sure thing that it would sell for, you said 110, right? Yeah. RB says 30. Death to Death Pile says 50. SoCal says 25. Seems like 50-ish is average at the moment in chat. Okay. All right, I want to try an experiment. You guys ready? <laughs> um, let's try this. Um, I will buy this jacket from the winner of this auction. You guys ready? We're going to play a game. You're auctioning I'm auctioning this right now, live. Oh okay. I will pay you guys $110 for this jacket. Okay? 110 so, you can choose also to just keep the jacket, okay? Mm -hmm. But I don't really want to sell this jacket. <laughs> but if you guys want to keep it, you're the, that's fine. I'll, I'll empty all the pockets and I'll sell it to you. We're going to start the auction at $1, okay? So, I think the way YouTube auctions work is um, people bid, and at the end, right, mm -hmm. um, we collect the payment address from the person, and you PayPal us, right, and then we send it out. So, that's what we're going to do. We're going to start right now. Starting at $1, so you put your bid in the chat, and then we'll go going once, going twice, three times, and, and sell it later in the chat. And if it's less than $110, i will pay you the difference if you want, right? Or I can send you the jacket. So you can either keep the jacket, or I can buy it from you for $110. Mm, I see. So we'll see. We can just do it now. I don't, I don't know how these auctions work, so <laughs> I'm going to empty all the pockets in case you want to keep it. Um, I think people will bid between whatever, and then you want to bid higher than the person before, I'm assuming, because mm -hmm. like... Um, so at the moment, okay, uh, we have El Watcho at 30. Okay. So wow, okay, so auction uh, is still going uh, uh, at 30. Well, let's make sure that that's what you are wanting to <laughs> Let's make sure that's what you want to do. Should they put an emoji or something maybe with it? Oh, okay, let's do that. Let's go, well, how about dollar sign? Okay, put, or... Is that not enough? Well, people are putting dollar signs in. Okay, so let's put, um, it, because some people don't know how to use emojis. Oh. 
Uh, oh, they're asking what size is it? Oh, size large. Size large, it's green. Can someone block this spammer person? Oh, uh, you want to block the spammer? There's a... Oh, let me do it. There's a... Oh. Let me block the spammer. This that one? one will chat. Let me block the spammer. Wait, is it the level, level one? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, hold, hold on, guys. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, we're trying, we're trying a live auction format, which we haven't tried before. I'm just testing it. So I'm willing to buy the jacket back for 110 okay? Mm -hmm. And if you want the jacket, you can. You can keep going. Mm -hmm. We're going to see, though, because here's the thing that's interesting. It's a sure thing, right? So if the auction ends at 100 you made a $10 profit. All right, max is at 65. Okay. What if it goes higher than 110? Then then they can either lose money and sell it back to me for 110, or keep which the doesn't jacket. make sense, or keep the jacket. Side gig is at 80. Okay. So we'll see what happens. Cuz this is what I'm talking about like <laughs> what you would want. Jane says, "What's the buy it now option?" <laughs> the the buy it now option is 110, which would mean we I just keep the jacket and we move on with our day. I just want to <laughs> see if there's a difference between the what I think the jacket is worth pre-owned and um, if people will continue to go higher. So well, John well, D's at 109.99. Oh. oh, wow. So you okay. guys have to bid higher than okay. that oh, after oh, him. Or it's at 109.99. So he's guaranteeing himself a one penny profit. Mm -hmm. Or, um, which is actually, that does work on friends and family, I believe. So I could PayPal you one penny. But this is the point is, when you know the value of an item, you can pay more. Kate hey, Denton says 110. 110, okay. So... If you want the jacket for 110, I'll sell it to you, or we can just call it a day. Because 110. It's going um, higher. Unless someone wants to go higher. Simon it, is at 125. <laughs> <laughs> so you could either, now I guess you will either want the jacket or you want to pay me $15 to keep it. <laughs> Which doesn't make sense. I appreciate the guest here, but that, doesn't, that does not make sense. Um, <laughs> this jacket retail, I think, I think is around 270 Mm. It's in good condition. Um, so I guess what you, you guys tell me, do I just collect the PayPal address? <laughs> Is that how this works? I'm learning. Uh, Maybe they email you? Or, but how do we know it's the right person? That's what I mean. That's mm -hmm. why this is... Uh, and then also, if you tell us... Um, if you give us your email, does now everybody in the chat spam you? I don't know. <laughs> right, yeah. Don't, don't so put your email they, don't in put the chat. Email, DM me, I guess, on Instagram. And I'll send you an invoice to see if you want it. Um, but we'll call it in. Wait, wait. What are we at now? We are at Simon still at one twenty-five. Okay. And what time is it? Oh, it's eleven twenty-one. Okay. So we've got. We'll give it thirty seconds. We're gonna do a, what, what they call a sudden death. Oh, JJ, are you bidding? Let me get it. We'll go thirty seconds. Where is the iPad? Is it here somewhere? What do you need? Oh, it is. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to do this sudden death thing where um, it'll just end in 30 seconds. Yeah, I, that's how I would do it, I think. I would do this sudden death. Okay, so. At the end of this 30 seconds, can they see it? Mm -hmm. um, I will sell to the highest bidder, and they can let us know if they want to just pay me $15 and I keep it, or if they want the jacket, um, I will invoice you and then ship it out today. So, I think it's going to sell for 125 right? Maybe. Yeah. <coughs> there was a different person, but they're not responding whether that's his bid. Okay. Okay, time's up. Who's the winner? Simon? Simon? Okay. So, Simon, do you want the item? Simon Algara. Simon, do you want the jacket? Are you sending me a $15 super chat? What are we doing? <laughs> I'm willing to buy the jacket back for 110 I don't know. But you can DM me at Instagram at Daily Refinement if you do want the jacket. This is why I like what not more than YouTube auctions. Come on, guys. How could I do this, collect the payment, and do this format, 
hundreds of times a day. It doesn't make sense. A lot of people have been recommending I do YouTube auctions, but how would you even do it? It's so complicated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, JJ says that that they bid last bid two hundred, but I asked if JJ if that his was his bid, and he didn't say anything. Okay. <coughs> so I don't know. See, this, so this, I think this, it's Simon. This so, is, I know, so it's a little bit messier than whatnot. It's for way sure. messier than whatnot. <laughs> and then can you imagine everybody listening right now has to listen to this? Right. So I, it's not <laughs> it's my favorite like, form of shopping. I want to be like, okay, next item. You right. know, I don't want to be doing this every, every single time. It's, it, it's okay if I had only 10 things to sell, to, to sell, but hundreds of items, it doesn't work, or thousands of items. So mm -hmm. um, anyway, appreciate you guys. Simon, if you really want it, DM me on Instagram uh, at Daily Refinement or email me at chrisadatarefinement.com and I'll send you an invoice for this for one twenty five. I think it's, a, it's an okay, reasonable deal for the item. Um, but appreciate you guys. We've got tons of videos coming up this week. And if you have any questions, email me, chris at dailyrefinement.com. Take mm -hmm. care, guys. Yep, chris at dailyrefinement.com. Bye, guys. Bye.